Well, hello once again, YouTube audience. You join me again sitting in the maestro because today we're going to finally be doing something that I've been putting off for a while, and that is the braking system on the car. We're going to be going through doing the front brakes, so that is changing the calipers, the discs and pads, the front brake hoses. We're going to be going through the rear brakes where we'll be changing the rear wheel cylinders. We'll be servicing the, the brake drums in general and all of that kind of stuff. And as a spoiler alert, things go a little bit wrong in this video. Uh, so... Yeah, we can all share my pain with that. And we will also be doing the brake master cylinder, which also needed replacing. Now, this video has taken over a month to film. I started filming it in the middle of February, and it's actually the end of March, pretty much. That was due to the weather in the UK. It's been so bad this month. There's been rain, snow, hail, wind. You name it, we've had it, and it's got in the way a lot. So yeah, I did a lot of the filming for this video pretty much as and when I could get a chance and a clear day. So without further ado, let's start on the front brakes. Okay, so first things first, let's get started with some of the most annoying parts, which will be removing the screws from the brake disc. Now, I'll be absolutely honest with you, when I last had a wheel off, I already tried this particular one over here, and it's pretty, um, yeah, it's pretty doesn't want to come out. And I've got the right size screw bits, so let's see if this one will do any better. Ah, oh, yeah, this one wants to come out. That's great. That means I probably only have to drill one of them out. Good thing I like to, to come prepared for this kind of thing. Right, that looks like that's going to be good. I can see that starting to split round there and off that, so that's good. That shouldn't be a problem. Now, the next thing I want to do is undo this bleeder because... That is going to be the one that would give us problems if it doesn't come undone. Now, this is an 11 mil, which has got to go on to here. And actually, that's going on all right. Let's see. Oh, okay. That's good. That's come undone. Still a bit crusty, though, but in theory, it should be okay. Let's try. That's good. So that means that this uh, bleeder valve isn't actually blocked up and I can give this a clean over with some kind of steel wall stuff, and it should come back and be absolutely fine. So I'll just loosely thread that back into the caliper, oh, and drop it on the floor for the second. So that's one of my biggest worries kind of out of the way. Uh, now what I want to do is I'm going to move the position of the brake disc. Right, so adjusting the steering should make that a bit easier, and we can now get to these bolts. This is a bit of a confession time. I've already actually done the other side completely, as I wanted to have a trial run to see if I need any extra tools, if there's anything I needed to go get, which I didn't have and wouldn't work. So that way, this way, when I'm filming it, it should go a little bit smoother. Okay, well that's good, that's actually moving that there, so I now need a 17 mil spanner. Ah, oh, there we go. And I'm going to do the same down here as well. That's that first retention bolt out. And that will now slide and move. But before we do that, I actually want to start undoing the brake hose itself and just get that cracked off. Holy... Advertiser unfriend language. I think I need to do that back up. Right, now there's brake fluid everywhere. Let's try that again. 15 mil, let's undo it. Oh, there we go. That has broken loose, which is ideal. So now what I need to do is I need to disconnect this brake hose. And that is gonna be accomplished with a 13 mil spanner, just undoing, which is good. That's coming undone nicely. But that's going to leak. Yep, that's going to be leaking and dripping everywhere. So that's a nice mess that I'm going to have to clean up later. And now this is out of the way. I need to bend this brake hose a bit and move it out of the way, which is not something I like doing, but they can bend a little bit. Crikey, we've got quite the leak starting to form here. So let me put that down there to soak some of that up. And I need to get a 17 mil on there. And this has got two nuts on here and to hold this brake hose actually on and 
you'll see what I'm dealing with. I've got to put, I think it's a 15 mil here, 14, 15 mil on this. Hold that into place and then undo that and we should be golden. Okay, that's coming undone. Now I'm gonna have to clean this nut up because I need to reuse this nut with the new hose. The brake fluid drip is starting to slow down, which is good. And that's it, the caliper can now be removed from the car. So yep, just undo this other 13 mil. There we go, and that is the caliper off. So these sliders feel good here as well. Of course, we'll grease them up. Pads weren't doing too bad meat-wise, but of course we've got brand new ones and brand new discs. So now I need a 19 mil to pull off the caliper carrier bit. <sighs> There we go, that's off. Another thing I want to say that the keen eye of you may have noticed is that I've actually swapped the suspension over already. Now this is something I had to do off camera for time constraints reasons. And uh, the other maestro that I had, basically had a deadline where it had to be taken to the scrapyard and the shell had to go. In fact, I did a little video um, showing you the differences between the suspension I took off here and the suspension on my old maestro. So let me cut in with that. So this is what is left of the parts car at this point. I've just swapped the front suspension over and I'll show you the difference in condition between the two. Okay, so you can see why I'm swapping these around. This is the one that came off the car and as you can see, it's properly rusted. And the bump stops are also broken and the spring is really rusty as well as like the, the top of the, uh, the spring perch. This is the one I've taken off the parts car and while the bump stop is also missing on that, uh, the actual shock isn't rusty and it's only done about 20,000 miles. So this one is perfectly serviceable, no leaks, no issues like that at all. And that's why we're swapping it over. And I've just loaded into my van the rear shocks to swap over. So sadly due to reasons outside of my control, uh, this is the barn I was going to be doing a lot more work on the Maestro in. But sadly that is no longer going to happen. Due to a change in circumstances from the person who's renting the barn, uh, it now has to be cleared. We've got to be out by the end of February. Today is currently Valentine's Day, so by the time you see this video, um, this shell will already be out and everything will be out of here. As you can see, I really did strip this thing down. I've only got a few more bits to get off it, uh, then it is being collected by somebody who's gonna take even more parts off of it and use some of the, the good panels, I assume, and other little bits and bobs and the axle and things as well. So yeah, it will at least live on serving many cars. Okay, so I have cleaned up the caliper carrier a bit and I now need to start cleaning up the surface here. And I'm gonna do that with a wire brush, just get rid of any little rusty bits and nasty parts as well. Now I should also be able to use these pliers, just a uh, fact I can do that by hand. Twist out the uh, screw that got basically broken off uh, by hand pretty much, which is nice. Now I've also cleaned off any loose flaky rust from the caliper carrier as well. And that's made a difference and that's made it look that little bit nicer. What I now have to do is lubricate the sliders. So I'm gonna pull the slider out like so, give it a little look and the grease in there, mm, doesn't look too bad, it just looks like it's lacking some. So I've got some brake grease. I'm gonna dab that over this, run it over with the fingers and it's proper, um, Silicon based brake grease stuff, all rated for the temperature and everything. Just slide it back on like so and get it to uh, go over one bit. That was a bit tricky to do, but now you can see it's on and it's all lubricated. Same with the other side. In fact, you can see there's actually still some good grease on there, but I'm gonna put some more on anyway, because you know, don't want seized brakes now, do we? And that's it, that is this cleaned up and ready to go. Now I'm just gonna give this bit of quick wipe down as well. Get rid of the worst of the stuff off the backing plate though i'm not too bothered about that quite honestly as that would all need to come off and be treated and if i wanted to make it look really nice and you know just get rid of the worst of the rust you can see it's a bit dinged up anyway um because when i swapped the suspension i actually had to take all the brakes off to be honest with you on this side um including the, the backing plate and everything just so i could get things on nicely because some of these bolts were seized in uh and also there's some hammer marks and things so i'm like eh. 
whatever. So I guess now that means it's time to put the disc on. First things first, a little bit of brake clean to get rid of some of the old nasty bits and bobs. Get rid of the worst of that. And I'm gonna put some new fresh copper, copper slip on there. Now some people don't like using copper ease, grease and things like that um, on brakes. I kind of have always done it that way. The only place I don't use them is the sliders because that can really cause an issue with your, with your sliders obviously and make them gum up because they can um, eat away at the rubber copper, copper grease. But for bits like this, it's fine. It's how I've always used it. And I've never suffered with squeaky brakes on cars that I have done brake work on or rebuilt them uh, like so. Obviously, you don't want to use tons, but just enough to be on the mating surface so nothing can stick. And it's always a good idea to do this because if you love a car and you keep it for a long time, there's a possibility you will be the next person that has to remove this brake caliper and this whole brake assembly, etc., etc. And you will thank yourself for that. Okay, so with that on, it is now time for this. Okay, so let's see how that pops on and if that's a, a nice good fit, which it should be. And I've got one of the screws left around. It's a screw that didn't strip off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it off with some of this wiry, steely wool thing that I've got here, the abrasive stuff. I can never remember the name of it. And then I'm just going to put a smidgen of copper slip on it. Now that way um, it shouldn't get caught to the disc or anything like that. And when I go to remove it, it should come out without totally stripping. I'm not going to bother getting a second one because one's enough. It's fine. And bang, that's that tightened up and that feels solid on there. Now I'm not going to clean the protective film off the brake disc yet. It's not time for that. Um, I prefer to get other bits and bobs on and do that as kind of one of the last things I do. It's now time for the cleaned up caliper carrier. Now, I've given the bolts a go over on this as well, so we're all good there. Now, I did have some spring washers, but I'm not sure where they've gone. So let me find some more. Now I have some new spring washers here, so that shouldn't be a problem. There we go, that's starting to thread in. Okay, that's going on. And with all of this that has been flapping around and moving around is one of the reasons I don't bother cleaning the disc until last. Because dirt and junk always gets on it. Okay. That's pretty flipping tight there. That shouldn't be coming off at all. Oh no! I forgot to put this bit on. Don't. It's always what happens when you're working to time constraints, which I am now uh, doing yet again today. Now this is still wanting to rub against the disc, so I might have to finesse that a little bit. All right, so I've now bent that round and that is out the way of the disc and not going to hit that at all. So that's good. There shouldn't be any problems with the back plate touching the disc, which when it does happen is highly irritating. Oh yeah, I thought about all that brake fluid stuff pretty mopped up now. Now it is time to put the hose onto the caliper. Now much like the other side, this is the caliper from my previous Maestro, uh, because this one is free and moves nicely. Even though the caliper I took off this, as you can see earlier from when it squirted everywhere, uh, seems to be free, the one on the other side was seized absolutely solid. So I've decided I'm gonna reuse these calipers because I know they're all good. I've inspected the seals, they're all nice. I had no problems with braking in the other vehicle. And uh, yeah, that means I could always get the other ones rebuilt or what I'd also like to do is maybe a brake upgrade at some point. So, hmm. So what I need to do now is just start screwing this in. That's going in really nicely, actually. So, okay, that bit is ready to go in. All right, as I'm about to start putting the pads on, now is when I want to start wiping off the uh, disc. With a bit of brake clean, all the oil should come off. Yep, and you can see all that oil is coming off. And obviously I'll brake clean this again after the whole fact that everything is on and stuff. But now, because I'm going to put the pads on, obviously I don't want to get all the oil and stuff on the pads and contaminate the surface. And here are the pads. They have an interesting brake-in coating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of copper slip onto the areas where there is... Uh, kind of contact with metal to metal very carefully not to get it 
on the disc itself, but if I do, it's not a problem, I can wipe it off. And I'm not using a lot, it just needs to be in some of the main kind of contact areas. Literally just a smattering of, of the stuff, just very light, a smidge, whatever you want to call it, so it doesn't also end up coming off as time goes on and getting on the disc, so that should be fine. And what I'm going to do is just move the disc about, wipe anything off that is there, but I don't think there was anything. So we're all good there. I'm gonna put a little bit on the corners of the pads as well. Put a little smidge in on the back plate, like the tiniest, thinnest layer on the back plate for any anti-squeak when it's in contact with the calipers. Bang, that's in place there. Simple as that for that one. Same with this one as well. Tiny little bit on the side parts. Just a little bit on the back and, and bang, that's it. That is on. Now with that done, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of Loctite, blue Loctite, just on the actual uh, bolt which holds the caliper onto the carrier because it comes like that from factory and you know, you don't really want your calipers coming loose or coming off, just a little safety thing there. It's like I Loctite suspension components as well with the blue Loctite stuff and I change things and I'm happy with them. Notice that I don't bother actually putting any of that copper slip or anything onto the caliper itself because having put them on the back of the pad, that should be all that I need for the actual contact points. So I don't bother with that. And then you've got more likelihood of things getting messy and getting onto where it shouldn't be. Start doing this up here until this starts moving. Same up here. And you can tell that this is nice and free and going good because I pretty much don't have to put uh, the actual spanner on to hold this into place until close to last minute. Uh, top one done up. Uh, right, that is the caliper itself on. Right, now we just have to worry about the actual brake hose itself. And this will go on like so. It has a little spring washery bit which goes over one of those little a little washer which goes over there. Oh, and this is going threading on nicely. Right, that's pretty much tight into place there. At least uh, tighten up like so. That actually, when that's nice and tight, brings that in a better alignment anyway. And it's the same, this is also a 14. I hold this here. Oh, is it 17? Sorry, it's 17, isn't it? Oh, it's not. Yes, it is, it's 17 here. I lied to myself. Right, making sure to do this up in a way where it looks and seems to feel natural. Yep, don't wanna do that up too tight for I have to eventually take it off again one day, but this hose is now on tight. It's pretty much a case of just bend this back into shape and get this to kind of start threading back on and making sure you're not gonna cross thread it or anything. I don't wanna over tighten this either. You don't want to start potentially bending or breaking or any of the flares of the fittings. So that's looking pretty good. What I need to do now is test it when it's on extension. It's going left and right and making sure it's not uh, hitting anything it shouldn't be. So that's looking good. That is not pulling on the hose unnecessarily or causing any issue or stretching that out, even when it's on absolute full lock. And when we're on opposite lock, it's not getting bent or kinked or anything like that by the looks of things. I think that should be okay. So it has been roughly two weeks because of course the weather in the UK has been off its face with snow and other things again. But uh, th th there's something I need to show you first. I'm gonna insert a photo of what I've found today and uh, <sighs> I'm not mad at you, Fred. I'm just disappointed. And no, I'm not trying to use this as a bodge to get through the MOT, this tape. I'm going to have to get somebody to come and weld this up before I actually take the car for an MOT. Um, I just don't want to get any extra moisture, damp or weather in there, basically, because inside, behind here, uh, the actual box sectioning inside looks very, very nice and in very good condition. So I don't want to start introducing water into it or anything like that. Well, it is a restoration of a car that's been sitting after all. Anyway, back to the brakes. As per last time, I've already done the other side of the brakes to give me an idea of how it's going to go. 
and I can tell you a few things now. So for now, unless they become a failure item, I'm gonna have to reuse these uh, brake hoses and possibly get a garage to change them. The reason being, on the other side, this is like so kind of seized up that as soon as I went to start going undoing this nut, it was moving the whole thing and the line was moving with it. And I thought, oh no, that's going to snap. And also the hose I've got for this is just, it's just wrong. It's too long, it's nearly twice the length. Um, and the fittings don't look 100%, so I'm gonna have to try and find another set of hoses anyway, I think. But other than that, they actually look okay, to be fair, these ones. A little bit of wear starting to happen on them, um, but as long as they haven't collapsed inside, we'll be okay. We'll only know when I actually go to, um, go to actually start bleeding the brakes, and we may have to also uh, get the garage to do this before they MOT it, I don't know. As I said, I'm doing the most I can to get this MOT ready, and when it goes in, if it passes, great. If it fails, then we um, we look at the work that it failed on and go from there. But anyway, let's start doing this side of the drum brakes. All right, well, let's start getting this drum off. I just need to pull off the cover here. There we go. And that is going to expose our split pin, which we need to remove. I kind of want to be careful about this. I know you're not meant to reuse them, um, but for the time being, I don't have any spare split pins. So I am going to have to uh, reuse it just for the minute and then replace it. Not ideal, but if you're careful enough, it can be done. I said I'll get some new ones on order and I will change those off camera when I next get a chance to do that. I just want to get this on today. And this is where things start going really, really wrong for me. Some of you is going to know exactly what is going wrong here and will be screaming at the screen. Uh, for the rest that don't 100% know yet, just keep watching. You may figure it out. And now we need to undo this with the large 24 mil. <sighs> yep, when in doubt, get your foot on the bugger. You are so tight, the other side was not this tight. And what I might need to do, might need to get my rattle gun on it. No, God, please, no! Wonder why on earth this side is so tight coming off. Other side was just not like that. It's starting to finally come loose now. Okay. Let's go back to the rattle gun. No! No! Oh, don't tell me that the nut has stripped the thread or something. Oh, Lord. I'm a dumbass, an idiot. It's reverse thread. It's taken me this time to realize it's reverse thread. Uh, really fortunately, now I've got this off, it looks like it was just the nut that I stripped and ruined and not the actual thread on the stub axle itself because I was about to panic. Ah, oh, that is a rookie mistake to make because of course it tightened up normally on the other side because that is in the direction of the travel of the wheels and it needs to be reverse thread this side because well this is the direction of the travel of the wheels and that way it won't come undone oh gosh that was one of the stupidest things i've ever done while working on a car wow okay um as I said, I, I think the thread is okay. I'll know once I get it off. There's some bit of the other thread, uh, I think, stuck on here still. So I need to, I need to take this off and give this a good clean up. But I, I think, I think we we might be okay here. So, yeah, we we may not have have to worry. Oh my lord! Thank thankfully this nut is a, a much easier to bend and muck about material than than this. Oh, okay, let's get this drum off then. When I tell you that I am so lucky that these threads are not damaged in any meaningful way, there's just a little bit of grit in them still and maybe some s small markings, I am so lucky after that massively dumb moment. 
Um, I'm pretty confident that after another good cleaning through, I'll be able to get a new uh, nut on there and I won't have any problems. Uh, the panic is, is over for now. And thank the Lord it was a nut that stripped through and, and, and not this actual thread and not this stub axle. Um, I will actually be able to sleep without crying tonight. But anyway, I need to do a little bit more work on this section now and I need to get these bolts undone that holds this in place. And this is what we have to deal with, these two bolts back here and the brake pipe. Uh, hopefully this brake pipe is gonna come off free enough. I don't have a kind of a proper brake spanner, open-ended one for this. So I'm doing the cardinal sin of very carefully using an adjustable, but it has been working. I'm gonna spray it up with the BDX beforehand and let it soak in for a minute. And I'm gonna make myself a cup of tea in the meantime and calm down. So while having a little moment to myself, I got the uh, wheel cylinder out. Now this thing is absolutely sea solid. Look at the condition of it. I mean, oh, yeah, there is no way on earth this could have got around doing anything but being replaced really and uh, this lovely new one oh I can actually move that around by hand and everything so it's good so in that case I just need to pop it in now while it does indeed come with a new bleeder rather annoyingly it doesn't come with any um rubber uh protective caps for the bleeder uh, so I'm gonna have to order some of those online what I'm also gonna need to do is give this a little clean up um, I'm not taking out the whole uh, shoe assembly here um, as you can see, it's actually kind of okay. There's a decent amount of, of meat on the drums and it doesn't seem to be coming apart too easily or breaking or cracking up there. So I think these are gonna be okay. I'm just gonna clean them up, give them a little light sanding over with some like 1,000 or 1,500 grit just to kind of get the um, material ready to rebond. The inside of the drum looks pretty decent. So I'm gonna do the same to that, give that a, a light um, kind of sanding over. This is gonna need cleaning out as well, and I'm gonna to have to pack some new grease into it. I do have some multi-purpose grease, uh, which is lithium-based and up to the temperatures, uh, so that should be absolutely fine. Obviously, this is all gonna need a good cleaning here around this area, and some new kind of brake grease and stuff put on here, just to make sure that this moves nicely, and I'm gonna to have to grease up the automatic adjust. I believe this is all fully automatic anyway, um, so in theory, when I press out the brakes, it should just adjust itself. Uh, at least that is how I understand that the system works on this because there's no uh, hole through the drum to manually adjust anything. I think it's the same with the handbrake as well and stuff like that. So yeah, in theory, I'm hoping it should just adjust up nice and easily uh, by itself and I won't pretty much have to worry about it, which would be nice. And would you look at that, the new wheel cylinder is on. Springs back in place, everything's had a good clean up. This is adjusted to its kind of a closest in setting. Um, I've kind of re-lubricated any contact points where there might be. It's now a case of just making sure this is fully cleaned up. Um, putting some lithium grease all over this stub axle. Cleaning up the inside of this bearing area and also kind of stuffing that with some grease too. And then just popping it on and kind of just, yeah, seeing how it is. Well, okay, here we go. The, uh, the old hub is, uh, or the wheel hub drum is back on and right now, it moves kind of nice and freely. And uh, yeah, that's good. Obviously I've got to now get some fluid into the brake lines. So I'm hoping this hose is gonna be okay. And more to the point for now, it doesn't actually collapse inside or anything like that. So I'll have to give everything a clean up and just see how it is. I can't see any like actual big splits or anything. Just a little bit of perishing around the side. We'll only know when we get some um, kind of fluid in it anyway. But as I said, more to the point, it's one of those things where I just kind of to get the MOT on it and uh, basically I can look at replacing it and if a line needs to be cut in I can take it to a garage and have that done because I have never worked on actual brake solid lines before and they scare me. I can't remember if I said earlier but I've ordered a new nut, I've ordered a set of split pins as well and I think I'm going to order um, a proper open-ended uh, brake spanner as well if I can find one. Uh, that's the right size for this particular set of fittings. So now seems like a good time to attack the uh, brake master cylinder and swap this over so I can actually get some fluid in the system and potentially start bleeding it and see how things actually are with the brakes. Okay, folks, please forgive me for the sinning I am absolutely about to do here. Now, I'm sure everybody knows that you should absolutely never use an adjustable wrench on brake line bits, but 
I'm doing it anyway, because I'm taking the risk here, not you, fortunately. Trick is to, if you want to kind of do it, is uh, kind of wiggle it a bit as you do it up, and then you can, uh, there you go. The ultimate uh, round it off tool. Do it all, round it off at the same time. You know how it is. As I said, I'm gonna be ordering the correct brake line tool, but I'd really like to get the master cylinder on today. And I think for if I do actually have to um, take off the rear lines in the end, what I've done is I've bulldogged them up. So hopefully they on that is with the Bulldog BDX, of course. I've done that up. So hopefully it'll mean that when it comes the time to actually attempt to get the lines off, I may still attempt to do it myself if I can get some movement and find a way to hold it in and not have it split and make it come free. Uh, but with kind of how tight the tolerances seem to be and how much it's stuck on, I'd rather use a proper brake spanner for that. Okay, that is the brake lines undone and out of the master cylinder. As you can see here, those are indeed now free. So I've just got to undo these nuts, which are 13 mil from memory. And with those brake lines being undone, I can actually, um, you know, maybe they're, maybe they're bigger than 13 mil. Oh. They are bigger than 13 mil, then maybe they're 17 or 19. Okay, those are actually 17 mil, not 13 mil. Ignore me there. So now I can start undoing the master cylinder. Now, thankfully I can just uh, do the rest by hand because it's a bit tough to get this big old, um, big old kind of ratchet in there. I think undo these connectors for the uh, brake fluid level sensing. I have to be careful around these brake lines, but Go. Add in another extension to help clear those brake lines. Oh, dropped the nut, but fortunately right on top of the alternator. And this is the bit which could be interesting. We have to see how fused this is to the actual um, rod from the brakes. <sighs> okay. Well, that actually came off all right. You can see that's awfully rusty and crusty inside. Oh, it does move, fortunately, but I'm not going to trust it anyway when I've got a lovely brand new one. Okay, so here you go. You can see this area here. Um, I'm just giving it a little wipe out, wipe out some of the crud. It doesn't seem too bad in there. Uh, yeah, I'd say that's okay, and the little sealy bits in there look all right. So what I'm going to do, just to make it easier, if I ever have to take this off again in the future, is just put a dab of grease on this shaft... That actually goes into the uh, back of the master cylinder itself, just so that way it's less likely to rust in and get caught on that if I ever need to change it. A little tip there that I've done before and has worked quite well. Let's pop in this new master cylinder. I'm run this over here, put this down onto the threads and that seems to sit in nicely. So, time to put the bolts up and over onto it. Just tighten those on by hand initially. with the ratchet. By the way, the reservoir on this isn't new. This is one from my um, last Maestro. And all I did was give it a good clean out. And uh, yeah, it's quite really nice. Though I am going to have to swap over the top caps because this is a three pin one and the other one is a two pin. I don't really know what that extra pin is for, but if I give the other one a quick clean with brake clean, it'll be fine, it'll go on no issues. Now it's just a case of putting the brake lines uh, themselves back into it. Okay, that's threading in really easily, really nicely. Doing up the pipes. And yep, that's snugged up nicely. They're not bent, creased or anything like that. There are no issues there. Right, I'll start popping some fluid in it in a second. So using an old toothbrush, I've given the cap a bit of a clean over and got rid of the worst of the muck. Everything is now in. Okay, let's start pouring the fluid in and seeing if there's any leaks. Oh, look at that lovely clean and clear brake fluid. And that appears to be draining down into the lines or certainly draining into somewhere. I'm just gonna check under the car for any leaks. And at this moment in time, I cannot see any. Ah, yeah, I am. Um, I may have forgot to put um, a bleed nipple on that right hand or that left hand caliper there. Uh, okay, 
Let's clean this up, and I think I'm going to come back when I've got somebody to help me bleed the brakes. And there we have it, folks. That is where we're stopping for today's video. It's already kind of a long one. So we've got a few more things that I filmed and stuff that I did straight after this, pretty much. Uh, but we'll save that for the next video. In the next video, we'll be addressing the rust patch. We'll be adjusting the rear brake drums as well, because I also got a, a new nut for that stub axle. Making sure all the brakes are fully bled through and that the car is ready when it comes to the braking system for the MOT. So until next time, as always, my name is Will. This is Tatty Old Cars, and we'll see you in the next video.